For the first segment of our photo editing application shootout, we look at watermarking because it is something I do to every image I produce. I have used Photoshop to watermark pictures by volasphoto.com. You can see it here in this photo of a moon and clouds. The watermark is in the lower right corner, identifying it as our product. Photoshop has the best text features of the applications we are comparing. I will show it here so that we can compare it to the capabilities of On1 Photo 10 and Darktable. I'm using Photoshop CS 5.1, On1 Photo 10.1.0, and Darktable 2.0.2. .2. In Photoshop, click on the text tool and then click on the image. A new layer is created, keeping the text separate from the image. Type the text for the watermark and it appears above the image. This sounds obvious, but it is not always the case. In Photoshop, text is created in vector graphics using TrueType fonts, so the letters are smooth at any font size. I can move the text easily. Click the Move tool, then click and grab the layer, with the text layer selected. Drag the watermark to a new location and drop it by releasing the mouse button. Photoshop has many options for highlighting text with the layer styles not available in the other applications. Creating a drop shadow or a glow would take manual techniques in On1 or Darktable. A different colored outline around the text can be important when the background is broken with texture or colors. There are also different settings for each layer style, making it easy to create a watermark that will work with almost any image. I normally change the opacity of watermarks so they detract less from the image. All of these software packages use sliders and input boxes in similar ways to change the visibility of the text. I have saved a copy of each watermark at full opacity so we can compare all of them at the end of this example. Darktable presents a modular environment rather than the tool palettes of Photoshop. Moving the cursor to the More Modules label, click on the triangle to the right of the label. A list of modules appears. Scroll down to the menu item Watermark. Clicking this loads and opens the Watermark module. Close the list. I am not completely familiar with Darktable at this point. There may be other ways to accomplish these tasks in any of these programs. I am only comparing basic watermark functions in this blog post. More information on On1 and Darktable functions can be found through links in the description accompanying the video and blog post. At the top of the content section of the Darktable module, I choose the type of marker which is the style of watermark. Darktable provides for other types of watermarks as well as text labels. For our purposes, choose the simple text.svg marker for text only. Type in the text. Beneath the text box is the color selection. Black is the default which I want. Clicking the block would bring up a standard color palette. Continuing down is the font selection area labeled font. The default font shown is none. Click None to choose another font. To use Zapfino, type in the first few letters of the font name to search, selecting it from the results. There seems to be no point in choosing a font size. Exit the font selection window and the watermark is scaled across the window. Looking at the bottom of the Properties section of the module, the watermark is initially scaled at 100% on the image. Clicking on the Options triangle reveals the choices to scale it on the image or either the larger or smaller border. To scale it further, click and drag the triangle for the Percentage Adjustment slider to Adjustments above the scale on Setting. The watermark cannot be dragged to a different location as in Photoshop. Moving it is done with sliders in the position section of the module. The dark table instructions do not show a keyboard shortcut that would allow dragging the watermark, 
but there is a customizable keyboard shortcut system available. By dragging the small triangles for the X and Y offset sliders, I can move my watermark to the position I want. I adjust the size of the watermark by adjusting the scale slider in the properties section of the watermark module. I can adjust the opacity in a very similar manner as I can in Photoshop. Like Photoshop, there are different blend styles to give us some options about how our watermark interacts with the image beneath. There do not appear to be the text effects available such as shadows and glows. There are many effects, in addition to the masks available in Darktable, that may be able to modify the text in different ways. At least you can see a representation of the watermark on the main image so you can position, evaluate, and resize or reposition as needed. On One Photo 10 has the least versatile watermark capability, but it is available. In On One, watermarking is done during the export phase. Choosing Export from the file menu brings up the main export interface. If the watermark option is not open, click the plus symbol next to the Export slash Resize label for a drop-down menu, Choose Watermark from the options. A requirement for this procedure is that I have already created a JPEG or PNG file of my watermark or logo. I chose the PNG version to take advantage of the transparency of the background. Choosing a JPEG image creates a rectangular image with a colored background. We can see a preview of our watermark, but only in the thumbnail of our image. As we adjust the properties, we see how they will affect our watermark in the preview. We have control over the size, how it is inset in a section of the image, and we can choose the section of the image. It is difficult to move just a little right or left when you have the watermark the right size and the right height on the image. and we can change the opacity like we can with the other two applications. In the other two examples, I did not include the export steps because the image output was the same as we saw on the screen. However, I show this export because of what it produced. I selected the photo I created and opened it in On One Photo 10, and the watermark that was exported was not what I thought I was creating. I tried the procedure twice and got the same incorrect result. It may be a bug that will be corrected in an update that is out by the time you view this. If I figure it out, I will report back here. Thinking outside the box, there is another way to create a watermark in On One Photo 10. They seem to have much better capabilities of handling layers than they do of handling watermarks. So I wanted to try using a layer to create a watermark. Again, we are in On One Photo 10 with our original image open. In this case, I enter the Layers module of On One and edit a copy. From the File menu, I choose Add Layer from File. For a layer, we can choose a JPEG, PNG, or TIFF file. TIFF, like PNG and GIF, allows transparent backgrounds. On One appears not to recognize GIF files. I chose a TIFF file thinking that the quality would be better than the PNG image. In the result, they were both about the same. As you can see, it opens clearly, although the font does not look quite as clean as it does in Photoshop. It is not a true type font or a vector-based graphic, but a bitmapped image. 
Using the transform tool, I move and scale the watermark so it can all be seen, and then work it to the size I want. I am pressing the shift key while I click and drag the corner points to keep the proportions of the watermark, the width and height, the same. Using this method in ON1, the watermark is visible in both the preview and on our image. We can alter the transparency as we can any other layer. While we don't have the text handling features of Photoshop, we do have all of the layer effects available in this versatile application to apply to our watermark layer. We can also transform it into a mask to use on other layers. And finally, I present the watermark comparison results. Without actual font measurements, I did not achieve the same size font in any of our examples. I think it is obvious that Photoshop and Darktable produce the sharpest text, likely because of using TrueType fonts installed on the computer. The ON1 Photo 10 watermarks in the center of the image are, on top, the TIFF image imported as a layer with transparency and no effects, and below that, one with some chiseling and blurring applied to a JPEG image, trying to smooth out the rough edges. The bottom on one watermark is that produced using their export procedure. I hope this helps answer some of your questions. Please leave me any comments, suggestions, or further questions.